High School in historic Wellsburg, West Virginia. WTRF proudly presents Ohio Valley Tonight with Nathan Marshall. Tonight's guest, George Bartley. Welcome to another edition of Ohio Valley Tonight with Nathan Marshall. And tonight I'm joined by George Bartley. George, thank you so much for coming in. Good, and good to be here. You are a Egg Allen Poe impersonator slash presenter, correct? Yes. And George, before we start this interview, I got to ask because I've never interviewed anybody who is a presenter or an impersonator for most people at home. How am I going to know when you are George Bartley? And how am I going to know when you're Edgar Allan Poe? Because this could get all schizophrenic up in here if we're not careful. Well, you can tell the difference uh, but, uh, because if I'm speaking like this, I'm speaking as myself, okay. George Bartley. But if I use a southern accent like this, I'm speaking like Mr. Edgar Allan Poe <laughs> because he spoke with a pronounced southern accent, being from Richmond during a time where all voices were quite influenced by the South. Oh, yeah. Almost very much. So, Vanna. Exactly. Well, Vanna. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. They didn't have the Internet. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, contrary to popular belief. Yeah, exactly. Contrary to, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, that would have influenced their voices. Yeah. It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived whom you might know by the name of Annabel Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. I was a child and she was a child in this kingdom by the sea. And we loved with a love that was more than love. I and my Annabel Lee. Well, I have to ask this, George, because when I was Googling uh, some of your, your work here, I found uh, that in 2008, uh, you actually wrote a Christmas CD, and it was entitled Christmas with Edgar Allan Poe, and it's described as a relaxing CD reflecting the private side of the writer, carols that would have been enjoyed by Poe. Now, to me, this is very interesting because when we think Edgar Allan Poe, we think Halloween. We don't think Christmas. I don't, I don't think many people do. And putting out a CD for Edgar Allan Poe with Christmas music on it would be almost like North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un putting out a Christmas CD. That's what we, you know, that's what we mm -hmm. feel like almost. Why put out the Christmas CD for Edgar Allan Poe? Well, for one thing, uh, Poe did not celebrate Halloween the way that we celebrate it today. Mm -hmm. And Christmas was very important to them. Uh, this was at a period when the harpsichord was being replaced by the piano. Uh -huh. And his wife, Virginia, played the piano every night. Yeah. And he would sing with her. And he also played the flute, which is not a, the way we usually think of Poe as someone playing the flute. Uh, and uh, Poe really liked relaxing music uh, in the, the uh, uh, in the CD, uh, uh, intersperse uh, some of the uh, carols with uh, uh, Come Rest in This Bosom, which was uh, uh, Poe's favorite song, hmm. uh, uh, song by uh, Thomas Moore, yeah, really relaxing. That's strange to me because you think it would, he would, his favorite song would be by a band from the 1800s that was a lot like Mushroom Head today, which is not my favorite music ever. But. No, I mean, he wouldn't like the, the uh, 19th century equivalent of heavy metal music yeah. or something like that. He's not know. mosh pitting through the streets Definitely of Baltimore. No. Yeah. no, he liked relaxing music. And that's one, one reason that he really fell in love with uh, uh, Virginia, because mm -hmm. she was someone who had a calming and relaxing influence on him. Oh, that's very interesting, too. And that was his cousin, of course, too. That was his cousin, yeah. yeah. So if you want to be relaxed, marry your cousin. No, well, they, we had a, say that. they had a brother and sister relationship, you know. Which is even stranger, but whatever. Well, yeah, they, 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 he was a messed up man, all right? That's okay, well, yeah. yeah he, he was a complex individual. That's a nice way to <laughs> say that's, that's what we'll leave it at. Poor Edgar. And neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And George, in a previous conversation we had together, you were telling me about Edgar Allan Poe's relations to the state of West Virginia itself, and I thought that was really interesting because I never heard that before. And I told some of my students that, and we actually have one of the students now, a junior from Brook High School, Sarah Young, who has a question about that. To what ties did Edgar Allan Poe have to West Virginia? And, and that's the kind of what I'm curious about too. What ties does Edgar Allan Poe have to West Virginia? Well, there are really three. Uh, first, he physically came to uh, West Virginia every summer when he was very young. He came to White Sulphur Springs because this is where the Southern aristocracy would come in the summer. Hmm. They would all vacation at White Sulphur. Yeah. Uh, he had a uh, pony and several dogs there. Uh, and the happiest times of his, of his life, it is believed, were spent in the Greenbrier Valley. Uh, and two, uh, his best friend uh, was uh, Dr. Joseph uh, Snodgrass, who ha um, had a practice in Baltimore. Uh, Dr. Snodgrass was from Martinsburg in the western part of Virginia at that time. Uh, and he actually took Poe to the hospital uh, when uh, uh, Poe was found unconscious on the street uh, in Baltimore. 
then the, a third person, at the, sort of the other at the other end of the spectrum, uh, was uh, Dr. Thomas Dunn English, a man who wrote some terrible things about Poe. It sounds very high school, yeah. but it, 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 it's, it's almost like high school girls. They're very smarmy, like on Facebook. I don't like the way you look. Well, I don't like your face, you know. Yeah, it was that kind of thing, and they went <laughs> back and forth. Except uh, Dr. English said things in print and used real names. Oh uh, gosh, and, uh, that's real nice. So Poe sued him for libel and won. <laughs> And he got, was able to get some new furniture. That way. <laughs> I'm going to sue you for furniture if you talk smack on me. And Ye do not sue me for furniture. But Poe wrote a story about Thomas Dunn English. So he really went up to him in the cask of Amontillado, where he buries uh, uh, Dr. English alive in the character of Fortunato. Oh, my gosh. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. So see, when anyone reads that story, I think Poe's idea was when it was a revenge story, and when anyone reads that story in the future, uh, then it will be as though pa uh, Thomas Dunn English is being buried alive over and over again. So kids, remember that. Next time your teachers want you to read The Cask of Amontillado, tell them, I don't want to kill a man. Yeah, watching him being buried alive. And so all the night tide, I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride, in her sepulchre there by the sea, in her tomb by the sounding sea. Again, I want to thank my guest today, George Bartley, who is an Edgar Allan Poe presenter. And you can learn more about George or Mr. Poe himself by emailing. If you want to get in contact with me, celebrate Poe, C-E-L-E-B-R-A-T-E-P-O-E -E -E at gmail.com. Celebrate Poe, gmail.com. And for a High Valley Tonight, this has been Nathan Marshall. <laughs>